Hi guys, we're back. Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. In the first part of this video, we solved for the deflection between the supports B and C at the midpoint. Okay, and in the last part of this video, we are going to solve for the deflection at point A, which is over here. So I hope that first video helped you out a little bit uh, with your understanding of this topic, and we hope to further that in this video. So let's get started. So I'm just gonna put the table back on here, pu pull it to another window, pause the video on this table, and watch it while we're doing the video, or while we're doing the problem, so that you can follow along with what we're doing, okay? because I've written the cases down on another piece of paper that I'm gonna bring over in a second. So, let's get started with the deflection at point A. So, what we're going to have to do, and it's gonna be the same thing as what we did in the first section, is we're gonna to have to take this distributed load here, and we're going to see how this distributed load affects the deflection over here at this point, right? So, whenever, and you're working with any superposition question, okay? and you have a load that's not directly acting at the point that you're, you're interested in. So for example, before, when we were finding the point between BC, okay, this load was directly pushing on the midpoint at BC. So we could measure it directly using case seven. However, now, when we're analyzing point A, all right, this load is no longer directly pushing on point A, okay? It's indirectly affecting A by deflecting point BC, or in between here. So that's something that we're gonna consider and I'll explain that to you when we get there. Okay, so let's start with the easiest case at case one, okay? So as we can see, we have an eight kilonewton force directly pushing down on case, or on point A, okay? And I've written that case down here for you. And whenever you have a, kind of a direct force acting here, we're going to consider it a cantilever, okay? We're gonna consider it a cantilever and we're going to just use the equation that's uh, in the table, okay? So in the table, we're using case one, all right? And we have the eight kilonewton force acting down at A, all right? This distance here is 2.5 meters, okay? As we can see here. And what, like I said before, we always draw the, well, the, the shape of the elastic curve or the shape that the, hypothetically, the, the beam should be bending in, okay? So it's pushing downwards and we've drawn the elastic curve downwards, that red line is the curve, so that we can see that the deflection here is going to be a negative one. It's gonna be deflecting downwards, okay? So I've gone to the table, I've found my V max at X equals L, so at the, at the maximum distance over here, this is L here, our L is 2.5, and I've written down the equation. So that's case one. Let's move over to the next case. So it's the same actually as the last problem, right? Whenever we have a force here, okay, we need to consider the deflection that that force creates and the deflection that the moment creates from that force. So what I mean by that is this eight kilonewton force is creating a moment at B, like it did before, right? So we need to measure directly its deflection and we need to measure the moment, okay? So remember that, all right? That's just something that you need to remember for these problems and it's one of the main tricks in these questions and your professor will definitely give this to you. So know how to do that, all right? So what we did is we, we multiplied eight by the distance, 2.5, and we found that there's a 20 kilonewton meter moment acting at point B, okay? And that's gonna cause the beam to deflect in this shape, okay? I've drawn the elastic curve there, all right? Now, however, this is the second trick, all right? We need to find the deflection at A, all right, not in between B, C. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the table and just pull up the table on the side so you know what I'm talking about. And we are going to find the angle of rotation at B. So this is how we indirectly solve for a deflection that's not in this section, okay? So we are going to find the theta, which is gonna be theta two, okay? I know the diagram in the case eight is backwards, okay, because the moment's on the other side, but just, if the moment is on the other side, okay, just flip theta one and two. So assume that theta two is theta one, all right? That's what I've done here. So I've taken the formula for theta two and I've multiplied it by 2.5 to find the deflection at point A from this moment. Now, why did I do that? I'll, I'll just draw it for you here below, okay? Is the, if you remember from, from basic high school math, okay? tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So 
what, why I, I drew that is because in deflections, all right, the, the beam is deflecting very little, okay? And the angle is actually very small, all right? I know it looks big because we drew it big here, but actually the angle of deflection is very, very small. And that's what we're measuring here. Theta is the angle of deflection at this point, okay? So if we know that the theta is very small due to the small angle rule, and you'll remember that from calculus, okay? So we can say that approximately 10 theta is about equal to theta. And because of that, we can say that substituting theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, okay? So that's why we're multiplying by 2.5 here. We're saying that the adjacent side here, okay, which is this distance, 2.5 times the angle here, okay, the tangent line, theta is equal to opposite. Okay, opposite here is our V. I know that's a little bit confusing, but that, that helped me understand it when I did this course. So I hope that you got that. Uh, if not, post below and we can explain that a little bit better. So, let's continue. So we have here in case seven, we took the theta two here and we multiplied it by the adjacent distance here and that will give us our deflection at A, okay? Same thing for case eight, we found the theta for point B from the, from the table, case eight, and we multiplied it by the distance to the point. Okay, so that's just a general rule. I tried to prove it to you there, hopefully you got it, but if not, just do a few and it should come to you. And what I did for the signs here, guys, I didn't look at the signs in the, in the table. What I did is I just looked at the, I drew out my deflection here, and I found that this deflection is negative and this deflection is positive, and that's going to be my signs. See, so the deflection here is negative, the deflection here is positive, and that's the easiest way to do it. Just look at your drawing. And now what we're just gonna do, the last part of this question is to just plug in values. Okay. So let's begin. We have our deflection at A, okay, V is deflection, and that's going to be equal to, all right, so we have negative, we're just gonna plug in, P, we're gonna do it in Newtons, right? So we have 8,000 Newtons times the length, which is 2.5, right? 2.5 meters, all right? And we have three. And if you remember from the last question, guys, EI was, was here. I'm just gonna write EI here for you, okay? And we're just going to plug that in at the end, so I don't have to write it out every time, all right? Minus, we have, let's, so this case is done. Let's go to this case. We have our moment, which is 20,000 Newton meters, right? Times the length here, all right? And that is the length in this formula is going to be this distance here, right? Because this is the angle of rotation for point B. That is five, okay, over three EI. That's constant, right? We're gonna plug that in later times the distance that we're, we want to measure to. Okay, so the angle times the distance will give us the deflection at that point. And that's 2.5, and I'm just gonna come down here. We have a positive deflection here, and four kilonewton, or W here, four kilonewton per meter. That's gonna be 4,000. We have the length, which is five meters, right? And that is going to be cubed, right? And we have 24 EI. That is also times 2.5 here. And what is that going to give us? Well, excuse me for that, sorry about that guys. What is that going to give us? Well, if we just put that in our calculator and we convert it into millimeters by multiplying by 1,000, we should get 4.05 millimeters deflecting downwards. Okay, so you're gonna get a negative number, but we just give the sign convention there. And there we have it. So we've solved for the deflection. I know that's a little bit confusing of an uh, explanation, but I, I hope that I conveyed that to you properly and I hope that you got it. And if you don't, comment down below or send us an email and I'd be happy to explain it to you a little bit uh, in more depth. But that's the basic idea, guys. You know, keep, uh, keep watching our videos, practice it a lot, and you should be able to nail this one on the exam. Thanks for watching.